Hey everybody, Dr. Derek Alessi, and I wanted to shoot a very quick nutritional diet video today. The SAD diet, why is it so popular? Well, first and foremost, if you haven't heard of the SAD diet, it's gaining in popularity. You're reading about it online, you're seeing it in different media. SAD diet is an acronym, it's just Standard American Diet, and it's being referred to as a SAD diet. Now, I don't think anybody intentionally tries to follow the SAD diet or a standard American diet. But what a standard American diet is, basically is unbridled eating for the most part. It's things in which you're not necessarily paying attention or eating the right things or trying to do the right things. It's considered, if you were to Google it right now, a very highly processed diet, very high in carbohydrate, very high in sugar. Any amount of dietary fat that's taken in is not omega-3 fatty acids. It's more vegetable oil and trans fats. And the protein isn't considered exactly grass-fed or high in amino acid availability. It's considered highly processed as well. You can think in terms of deli meats and cold cuts and fast foods and just lower quality proteins. That would be the, the standard American diet, the SAD diet, and that doesn't even get into beverages and what that consists of from sugar-laden drinks and Gatorade and soda pops and alcohols and so on and so forth. Now, once again, I don't think anybody intentionally does that. What I think is that seems to be the default for a lot of people because they're not doing anything intentional. So nobody's choosing that diet. They're just not choosing maybe a better one. And when it comes to diet, when it comes to eating right, and a lot of you know this as my clients, and a lot of you know this from watching that I talk about this all the time, there's not a one-size-fits-all. There's not. I'm not going to just say, hey, you know what, go out and do keto, go do Atkins, go do paleo, do whatever. I don't think it's that. But what I do believe it is, and what I teach is, our goal is to eat the right foods, and keep glucose and insulin low. And if you eat the right foods and keep glucose and insulin low, great things happen. In fact, what those great things are is, while your body fat stays really low and you get lean and tight and tone and all of the things that you want aesthetically, but more than that, you also have the energy level that you want and it's nice and consistent throughout the day. And then in addition to that, it helps your overall health both now and in the future by preventing a lot of different problems and diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, dementia, liver problems, kidney problems, vision problems, and others. And what we're learning about now, of course, is COVID-19 problems if you do the right things. So it's about eating in a way in which your insulin level is low. And there's many different ways to get that done and to accomplish that. I do believe there should be an adequate intake of protein Protein should be from leaner sources that are high in bioavailability. And the better the source of protein, of course, I think it is the better for your body. Uh, I'm a fan, of course, of taking in a protein powder that's grass-fed New Zealand protein. That's why I made Pure Zealander for that reason. Uh, when it comes to other things for beef and pork and chicken and turkey and eggs, same type of philosophy. I think it's that important. When it comes to dietary fat, and fat, by the way, is the most talked about nutrient right now, macronutrient right now, is because of the ketogenic diet. It is about taking in the right amount of fats. Many people that do keto are up to 80% dietary fat, which to me is really, really high, super high, hard and difficult to sustain, and in my opinion, unnecessary to stay at that level. I don't teach keto, but I think a lot of the principles of keto can work very well and we can accomplish it in other ways. Uh, but then it also comes down to keeping the carbohydrate levels in terms of eating them, ones that are lower in glycemic index and just not having them as often. If you do that, you move away from the standard American diet. You don't have to suffer the consequences of the typical standard American diet. You could become whatever you want to be, energetic, healthy, uh, having uh, life in your step and living longer, quality of life, what ultimately that you're trying to achieve your nutrition is going to play a huge role. So hopefully today this video served you. You are no longer, if you are, following a sad diet. You're going to have a much smarter, happier diet. I'm Dr. Derek Alessi asking you to make the most of your life and live it fit.